Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I, I gave you a, uh, a little rundown of my watch, uh, not watch, what, what is it with you and watches? I thought you would overcome your watch obsession. You're talking about razors. Yes, sorry about that. Yeah, razors. So, I gave you a, uh, a little rotation look at my uh, razors and, you know, it was too far. You couldn't see them. And I wanted you to see them, so I wanted to give you a presentation similar to when I give you like a state of the watch uh, collection. And as you know, I've overcome my uh, my watch addiction. It's obvious, by the way. I just throw these Freudian slips in there all the time. So uh, I want to let you know what uh, it you know the Merker 38 HD Barber Pole is a nice heavy uh, razor, uh, 40 bucks. It's mid-range and aggression. It's I like the weight and I like the bar. See how it's uh, solid at the end. There's a 38C that's hollow and I don't like it. It feels sloppy, and it's it's a short handle. I like the long handle of this. So you take this bad boy off, and you you can clean it very easily. Uh, but you do have to take it apart, put the blade back in, and boom, you're good to go. Now uh, what happened was uh, this about three years ago I switched from a uh, uh, disposables, replaceables, whatever the heck you call them, Mach 3's, I used to buy those things and I, uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this here is called a Gillette Super Speed from about 1966. I don't use it, it's just not aggressive enough. I gotta go over my uh, my beard too much and uh, even with a feather blade. This This thing is a good trainer for a beginner. The Gillette Super Speed. Uh, if you're worried about cutting yourself, this might be good for you. But for me, it's just uh, too much work. Uh, this next razor is probably uh, the best razor you can get for the money. It's uh, it's an adjustable slim, and as I was telling you, you never want to uh, adjust it when it's closed. Open up the uh, the butterfly, and then you can. Uh, I like it on eight. Uh, keep mine on eight, and uh, it's on nine right now. Now it's on eight. There's the uh, so the Gillette Slim. It's very similar to my uh, Gillette Fat Boy. The Slims you can get in mint condition for uh, sixty to eighty bucks, uh, and uh, they're a little lighter than the Fat Boy, but apparently the slightly smaller head allows it to get under your. Uh, the mustache area of your nose. So I gotta be careful picking up the fat boy because it's got a blade in it. It's got a feather blade. I don't mess around with feather blades, man. I treat them with respect. This is the fat boy. I've used it three days in a row. I absolutely love it. I keep it on seven. I did it on eight three days ago and wow, I got a little bit of, felt a little sharp there, man. I felt very aware of uh, my mortality. And, uh, if you want, you can use a brush. I use a synthetic. I'm, I'm not really into uh, rubbing a, a badger tail on my face. It doesn't turn me on, man. I use a synthetic brush. And, uh, you know, what about using your hand? You can, but then, you know, you got a slippery hand. If you want to use your left hand, now it's all slippery. So, um, if you want two hands that are relatively not slippery, which is kind of a good thing when you're shaving, you can apply it with this. Uh, so, it's about a 10 minute operation. I want to make sure you guys had a table uh, top view of uh, my razor rotation. Really, I'm just using the Merker, the Fat Boy, and the Slim. And uh, this has got a blade in it. I got to be careful. So let's just uh, keep it in the stand there as we have this discussion. So the question really is, you know, if you're using disposable razors, sh should you um, should you make the switch? Am I an evangelist for um, for double-edged razors and actually I'm not I think if you have the bug just like you have the watch bug then you've got the bug uh, I'm not gonna try to tell people to get into watches either uh, either you have the bug or you don't now I, I do want to first give you some advantages to those of you who do use the disposable razors which I used happily enough until about three years ago I switched to uh, the Merker HD barber pole you've got your convenience you've got your shorter shave time You've got your shorter learning curve with the uh, with the disposable blades. Uh, you don't cut yourself as much because they rotate, and when it rotates, it forgives your face. 
And that forgiveness means a lot to people. Some people uh, will just shave in the shower with those bad boys. Why not? It's just more convenient. You're in a rush. I totally get it. Uh, the Probably the biggest disadvantage to uh, shaving with a double-edged razor is when you're switching the blades, man, you, you got to be careful, man. You want to touch the blades, you know, you want to touch the blades from here, not here, or else you're going to be bleeding all over the place. Knock on wood, I've not cut myself, man. I treat this thing with respect. So uh, I think transferring the blades from the packaging to your razor is your biggest uh, issue. Uh, you know, there are some disadvantages to disposable razors. I guess the, the number one uh, disadvantage is price. Uh, it, it costs you about 200 bucks a year to buy Mach 3s. I think you can buy about, oh, I don't know, 15 for a little under $30. And I don't know how quickly you go through those. You know, my, my wife's uncle, she'll use one of those things for a month. But I can only use them for like three days, man. After three shaves, I'm done. I mean, it, it's too dull. And, and uh, honestly, uh, I don't like to shave more, the very most, four times uh, with a blade. That's just me. I guess everyone's beard is different in how it affects it. Uh, so, you know, you, a year's worth of double-edged blades cost you 15 bucks for top-rated blades. And uh, it, it brings us now to what are the advantages of an old-school razor that could really cut you, man. Why would you go into this world, McMahon? What is your problem, man? Well, number one, it began with the savings factor. I, I was appalled at the cost of those uh, disposables. And uh, the only thing that encouraged me is when I was on Amazon just now, it doesn't look like they've gone up in price. Look like the, looks like the uh, razor industry is very competitive and, and uh, they kind of maxed out on what they could uh, charge people. But nevertheless, uh, I, still, I still feel that they're just too pricey. Uh, that, though that's not the real reason why I shave the double-edged razor. Uh, it could be argued that the increased cut risk of a double-edged razor uh, cancels the savings anyway. So I don't think that's the reason. I think the reason why uh, I shave with double-edged razors, I think the reasons are intangibles. Uh, number one, you're pampering yourself. You're a guy, man. You're a dude. How many male rituals are there in this country that, that allow you to pamper yourself and not get teased, man? Uh, this is, is like one of the few rituals of, of male pampering where you're taking care of yourself and it's okay. No one questions that. As far as I'm concerned, uh, taking care of myself with a good 10 minute double uh, edge razor shaves, to, to me it's like working out with my kettlebells. I'm taking care of myself and uh, I put it in the same category. Uh, so to me, spending 10 minutes uh, to shave, uh, you know, with my brush, my bowl of high quality shave cream and an old school razor, it's like working out and um, I feel like I'm taking care of myself. Like I said in a previous video, you got your rosebud factor or maybe you could call it your nostalgia factor. You know, nostalgia is really powerful. Do you know that there's old dudes, man, who will go see the Rolling Stones? And all these in the who and all these bands because they want to relive the magic of their youth I mean trying to recapture the magic of your youth is powerful man you can write a best-selling book about that and uh, so I think you do have your uh, your nostalgia factor I guess you could call it your uh, rosebud factor uh, which is one of the intangibles uh, and then there's a time of old school where you you slow down and you spend extra time to achieve top quality on something that matters to you it's kind of like I call it the old school code uh, you know we live in a society that we're just rushing and we're doing a thousand things at once and we got a little opium machine called the smartphone and we're multitasking the idea of shutting everything down and just uh, doing an old school shave is rather refreshing to me, I hate to tell you. And I think that's what it is. But I want to let you know, number one, I'm not telling anyone to do double uh, edge razor shaving. I think either you have the bug or you don't. Number two, all this intellectual stuff I just gave you, complete BS, really. You know what I mean? I like doing it. That's what it is. If you enjoy doing it, 
then you're going to do it. You don't need McMahon or some academic to break it down and get all postmodern on you, uh, get all meta-analysis on you about it. Um, I really like it, and I, I think some of the reasons I gave are pretty plausible. But uh, I'm feeling pretty good about the shaving. Haven't uh, killed myself yet, obviously. Uh, don't feel like I want to do a shave demonstration. I know there, there's a lot of uh, videos out there on YouTube where that's going on. I feel like I would just be re that would be repetitive. It would be redundant, so I'm not going there. Uh, so uh, my next video, I'll tell you about some content. I want to start addressing some uh, some essay like exposition uh, with some comedy edge, some comic edge that I want to deliver uh, in the next uh, few months. I got some ideas in my head, man. Some ideas that might help neutralize my watch obsession and, uh, and some other obsessions that I have. So uh, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, I am out.